Hello, welcome back everyone. Now I think I have often voiced my love for shoes on TMS and I make it a point to put my best foot forward even though my cameramen refuse to focus on my feet. I don't know why you know they do that. Anyway, the truth is as much as I love shoes we haven't really had the chance to invite any Pakistani designer shoemakers to our show but that is going to change today. Let me introduce my guest in the studio this morning, Samia Azmi, Shahzada, our sisters, with popular acclaim, renowned for providing unmatchable quality, exceptional detail and global trends to the local designer shoe industry. And having actively been designing for the last 15 years and in retail for the past 12 years, the duo are well equipped to take on this task with a diversity of European courses and training in shoe design from countries such as Italy and Switzerland. Please welcome one half of the designing duo, Azmi Shahzada. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you are going to be my best friend, by the way, from now on, because I love shoes. Why did you get into shoes? Uh, because I love shoes, <laughs> and uh, mostly because we were associated with leather, and uh, it was something that I found very interesting, how to match the different pieces together and come up with something wearable, interesting, hmm. and pretty. So. Lovely, great. And it was easier for you to get into it when you decided, okay, shoes it is, because with leather you can do so much. Um, it was shoes because that was my natural inclination, the love of them. And um, it's not that easy to get into it in this part of the world because the awareness is quite limited and you're trying to introduce new concepts. Um, there is a limited uh, interest in sort of materials used for it. So for instance, stuff that is used abroad widely and considered quality is not really used so much here. Locally, we're using a lot of artificial materials. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the focus is very much on the look. Uh, that also is sort of has a, you know, a more local flavor to it, what the look should be like. But so, less on the comfort. Yes, and uh, less on the comfort. As a woman, I feel you wear shoes, so you have a sensibility of, you know, this is not comfortable, this doesn't work. It should look nice on your foot, you know, those sort of things. Absolutely. Now, before you were making your own shoes, were you buying them here in Pakistan or abroad? Where would you shop your shoes from? I was uh, one of those who was buying them from abroad. Um, I was living abroad briefly, so that explains that. But I would buy, like, the local Kolapuri, you know, when that was the ah. ethnic trend was mm -hmm. in. I would buy those from here. But uh, not really. They didn't suit my sensibility, my taste, the local Azmi, stuff I know exactly available. what you are saying because I can buy absolutely anything in Pakistan. But shoes is one thing that I... Uh, we have beautiful, by the way, don't get me wrong, we have beautiful designs here, we have so many choices here, but you're right about, uh, you know, that, that thing, finishing, quality, comfort, the heel, it keeps moving, finesse. And the so thing many is things. that what people don't, they can't put their finger on, is that it's the material that is used to construct the shoe that actually makes a big difference in your... You know, you, you might think, I don't like this, but you can't put your finger on why. Mm. Because there's a lot of awareness about clothes. People know that, oh, silk is more expensive than, you know, cotton. But they don't know why leather is more expensive, why it looks good. So we'll get a lot of, oh, this looks really good, but why does it, you know, why is this priced so? Because it's just the materials that go into making it. Okay, uh, since you are here, and uh, since I am, I don't know about the rest of the people, so probably this show is more for me than anybody else. Do tell me the process of shoe making very uh, you know briefly if you could what comes first the design the concept uh, first of all is a concept like where are you going with uh, the theme of colors the season is it light is it dark is it a party shoe so you kind of have to uh, decide the category in which the shoe would fall okay. is it a casual wear flat or is it a formal wear and then we kind of sketch out the design <coughs> once we've sketched the design out uh, it's the pattern is cut once the pattern is cut, this takes a process because then a, a rough sample is made mm -hmm. and you try it on and you see how it fits. If it's falling in the right places, is it hurting, hurting anywhere? And then we, uh, once that is finalized, the upper is finalized we, and the pattern is set, we choose the colors and we decide if we're going to, you know, minus subtract something from it or add something to it. Um, then it goes into production after the colors and the leather is chosen. Mm -hmm. It goes into production, you know, with the uppers are cut and made. And, and the, the sole, sole is made. The sole. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I was reading actually on your site on Facebook as well that you are probably the only shoemakers in Pakistan who have that soft sole thing. W right. What's that? Um, I know because I love it, I feel it, but I don't know exactly what it is. 
Here's the thing that a lot of people do not know. So when you go out into the market and buy a shoe, what they're doing is it's a very cheap option. What you do is you take a, a imported Chinese sort of sheet, you double it and you place an upper on it and then you sell it. And what people look at is the upper. So they see, oh, there's a brooch on it. Oh, I, this is totally <coughs> worth the price. What we do is the sole is something that we, you know, the sole is very important. Mm. It's at the center yeah, of the not shoe. Just under the foot, but the sole. The sole of the is person it? is like the sole of the shoe, mm. and um, so we have the the fact is that that little sheet is supposed to be the the thing that comes right at the end. That's okay. the thing you walk on. The, 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 the lower thing. The lower end, lowest yes. thing. Rather. And we layer it with with a special sort of imported rubber. Then it has foam. Then there's finally a layer of leather on it. Hmm. And it <coughs> covers it up. And that's a proper complete sole. As you see when you buy shoes from abroad. You yeah. know, because you have to walk in these shoes. They have to I just thought that since we are talking about <coughs> shoes, we, she has brought some shoes here to show us. These are the classic um, Samya Azme Shazada shoes. I love the wedge. I love the colors. So what do you do? You look at Cosmo and Vogue and pick up, you know, the latest colors, designs? Um, it's actually, we. I would love to do that, but I don't get an opportunity because production is something we're handling ourselves. We have our own factory. We have to be very quick in what we decide and choose. So it's based on the leathers. Whatever we are getting in hmm. terms of supply, what we order in the beginning of the year are the pieces that we work with. So, for instance, if I'm there and I really like this particular is a weave, uh, special sort of woven leather. Hmm. So we which one are you talking that, about? Um, the one on the wedge. Okay. And then the wedge is a type of heel in which you can showcase a pretty leather more because hmm. there's more uh, True. surface area. True. So you can really see that it's uh, the texture and the color and sort of combine it. And do you yeah. see also, obviously, you know, with the weather in Pakistan, right. uh, more open-toed shoes are worn? Definitely. I mean, it's a different culture. <laughs> you know, uh, we have to separate ourselves from trends abroad sometimes because the trend abroad right now is like very high, six-inch heels, platforms. Hmm. That's not something that's very compatible with our culture. You don't see women walking around in six-inch heels But that does look day. beautiful under, you know, the kind of clothes that we they wear. They look lovely in the evening. So we do a lot of heels for the evening. But... You know, women are very conscious about their height for some reason. We, they don't want to be very tall. The, they're kind of sort of trying to gauge if their husbands or their, you know, the men they're walking they with are not shorter than, than them, you know, <laughs> because True. they're wearing heels. So the cultural impact of that, of the fact that it's very hot, we have to have open-toed sandals. Right, uh, right. We have garden parties, we have garden events. The hmm. wedge is excellent for that. Okay, the, as we now tell me, now I, I'm just looking at this shoe. It's beautiful. I absolutely love the crystals and these are Swarovski These are Swarovski crystals, yes. Okay, I don't know if I said that right, but you know what we are talking about. So you get them from? Abroad. They're imported from Austria. We have to select the sort of the stones that we're going to use in the collection and um, we will then just order them. We have to place orders like six months in advance mm. and we get them and uh, they're incorporated in the design. And then you decide how they will be placed on the shoe? Yes. They're actually, that's decided before they're ordered because... Oh, obviously, <laughs> that's how it would be. Sorry, I have absolutely no business sense at all. One thing, <clears throat> I have uh, recently bought, you know, shoes uh, from abroad and the latest trend in heels is those straight straight heels. Right. I hope you understand what I'm talking about, but they, they don't curve uh, as much. They are right. more straight, but I have not seen any Pakistani shoemaker right now who would, you know, uh, move on to that kind of heel as well. Why is that? The reason is that it's very difficult to introduce new concepts into the market. We are retailing, so we sort of have to keep what the customer wants in mind. Hmm. So hmm. even when we introduced this heel, it took us about three years to get the acceptance in it. You know, people who were traveling abroad were bringing that trend back and they understood and then they were willing to buy. People are generally very resistant. They want comfort. They want something that's short. They don't want a high heel. Hmm. And uh, young girls want high heels, you know, but then uh, the larger part of the market is women who just want something that they can walk in and it looks pretty. They're resistant to it, so it takes time to develop an idea and bring it into the market. Yeah, but you would also know that the general market, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that the general market uh, would get stuff from the general market. You are a designer shoe wearer, right. so you know there's only a certain clientele who can, number one, afford your right. shoes as well, right. because obviously with crystals on them and everything, they're not right. going to be very cheap. So they will also be looking for a trend which is not available or which is very different from the general market. 
Um, they do come in and they would like to, but the thing is that you like something, but when you're going to buy it, you end up buying something practical. Huh. So we'll get a lot of suggestions and we have some of those heels. We try to introduce them. They are in the stores. But even if you cannot buy the shoe that we have, people are coming to our stores, the retailers from other shoe, uh, you know, shops <laughs> to see what is the trend that we are introducing. Oh, okay. And they'll come and they'll see it when they'll be like, no, we can't take this, you know, to to the market so it'll stay with us mm -hmm. whereas some of the trends that we've introduced you will find them their popularity sort of increasing because people come in they might not buy it but they'll be looking for that style when they go shopping okay so that sort of that's how you kind of introduce new concepts and asma what about uh, coat shoes closed toe shoes and boots right. boots were the rage this winter right. um, and although we don't really have that weather uh, you know okay let's not talk about Karachi or anything right. but we do try to keep up with the trends we do have a month of cold in Lahore Islamabad is still cold you can right. wear boots what about them um, we do make clothes shoes and we made the round toed shoe it was quite popular we made coat shoes all of those um, boots we haven't introduced we are a Karachi based company I have to admit this is a weakness it's very hot in Karachi yeah, there is no imagine. concept of boots um, and it is a very uh, labor intensive process that we have to develop we would love to develop it because we are now in Lahore and we recently opened in Islamabad and I can see that it's cold and people want to wear boots so that's something that we will be working on in the future. But uh, as of right now, there is not that much demand for it. Okay. And my final question to you, when you come up with a new collection, when do you uh, start preparing for it already? Like the ones that you came up now, uh, they were done, what, six months back? Six months back. That's correct. Okay. Right. So sometimes people will come and they'll <coughs> say, oh, can I, you know, make a make this shoe on special order or can I and we don't have the leather anymore because that was ordered a year ago and it was made six months ago so that sort of there has to be that free planning okay let me inform our viewers that Azme um, um, no Samia Samia Azme Shazada shoes that's a long one are available in Karachi in Lahore and also recently in Islamabad, Islamabad yeah. as well so three cities and um, any plans of growing to other cities we as do well? we would love to be in more cities we'd like to be more in Lahore present in more uh, places it's a retail experience it should be fun oh lovely lovely okay <coughs> as we do this